So today we're going to talk a little bit about Pokemon and their paleontology. And so my name is Julie Chrissy and I am the program coordinator at the Rutgers Geology Museum. And helping me talk about Pokemon today is going to be Rhea Sarkar, who is our tour guide, who has been talking all night to you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. So for those of you who are not too familiar with Pokemon, uh, Pokemon is a Japanese series that was originally created by a guy named Satoshi Tajiri. And he was inspired by his childhood um, hobby of collecting insects. And so I think it, Pokemon first came out in the, in the late 1990s. Um, and actually right now it's the highest grossing uh, media franchise of all time. And so if you're not too familiar with the series, um, when in the Pokemon universe, when a kid reaches a certain age, um, they can leave home and go on a journey um, to become a Pokemon trainer. And on that journey, they travel the world and they catch Pokemon and they collect them. And then they can train them and battle them with each other for fun. So when I when Pokemon first came out, when I was probably in second or third grade, um, there were 151 Pokemon. And since then, it's been probably almost 25 years by now. And there's actually almost 900 of them. So that, that seems like a ton, and it is. Um, but compared to how many animals there are in real life, it's not quite so many. Um, but anyway, so 900 Pokemon is a lot. And some of those actually are fossil Pokemon based on prehistoric creatures. And those are the ones we're going to be talking about today. So before I get started, there's two quick things I wanted to mention for people who aren't too familiar. Um, the first thing is, what is a Pokedex? So I actually have my childhood Pokedex right here. And the Pokedex is basically a portable Pokemon encyclopedia. So a Pokemon trainer who goes out on their journey to collect Pokemon, um, they'll get a Pokedex. And whenever they encounter a new Pokemon, they can open their Pokedex and get more information about that Pokemon. So today, when we talk about the fossil Pokemon, we're going to be looking at some of the um, Pokedex entries about those different Pokemon. Now, the second thing I have to mention quickly is about evolution. So there's a thing called evolution in Pokemon, but it's not the same thing as uh, biologists call um, evolution. So in Pokemon, um, evolution is kind of treated like a power up or an upgrade. and so when a Pokemon battles, it'll gain experience and eventually it'll level up. And when each Pokemon reaches a certain level, they can evolve into their next form. Um, so obviously this is not how it happens in nature. Um, in, in nature, evolution is the idea of populations of animals changing, having their characteristics change over very long periods of time. And this happens through a process called natural selection. And that is the process where beneficial traits that help the animal to survive are often passed down to their offspring. And if they're still beneficial, those traits are again often passed down. So over very, very, very long periods of time, animals can become better adapted to their environment. And once enough change has occurred, new species can evolve. So they're used different ways in nature and in Pokemon. So I wanted to make that clear at the beginning. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about really quick before we start with Pokemon is that because this is the geologic time late night, we're going to put all the Pokemon, the fossil Pokemon, into the framework of the geologic time scale. So as we learned in the trivia, the Earth is about 4.6 billion years old, and it was only very recently that animals evolved. Uh, so we think animals first evolved around 800 million years ago. Um, but they didn't become abundant until about 540 million years ago. And so that little section of the time scale that is blue at the end, that is the time when animals were abundant. So all of the Pokemon that we're going to be talking about are going to be put in the framework of this time scale and when their real life counterparts would have existed. So without further ado, we can start talking about our first Pokemon. And that is, uh, well, the first two are Anorith and Armaldo. 
And these two Pokemon are based on the real life animal called the Anomalocaris. And it existed back in the Cambrian period. So about 520 million years ago. So if we read the Pokedex entry on this guy, for Anorith, which is the smaller green one, it says that aquatic Pokemon, it's an aquatic Pokemon that lived in warm seas and that it used its wing-like appendages to swim through the water and its claw-like mouth appendages to capture prey. Okay, thank you, uh, Julie, for the introduction and for the first Pokemon entry. So Anomalocris, so in real life, right? So Anomalocris evolved during the Cambrian period, so around 515 million years ago, and it went extinct about 488 million years ago. And they're thought to have been closely related to arthropods like spiders, crustaceans, and insects. And there are six known species and hundreds of fossil specimens. The name actually has Greek and Latin roots, and it actually means unlike other shrimp or abnormal, uh, abnormal shrimp, which I agree, it really looks <laughs> super weird. Um, and every species lived in a different environment, but they primarily inhabited the warm shallow seas, which is similar to Anorith and Arbaldo. Uh, it also swam with its wing-like appendages and hunted with its claw-like appendages which is also the same as how this Pokemon hunts. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our next set of Pokemon. Um, these are Kabuto and Kabutops, and they are some of the originals from when I was a kid, and they're actually my favorite. Um, so in the original Game Boy Color video game, uh, you could find a fossil of the Kabuto, and you would bring it to the science lab, and then the scientists would resurrect the Kabuto Pokemon from that fossil. Um, so if we read the Pokedex entry for Kabuto, it says that Kabuto inhabited beaches 300 million years ago and has not changed much since. Once they are flipped over, they cannot write themselves. And to me, that sounds like a horseshoe crab. So I, we, I think this, these two were based on some sort of mix between horseshoe crabs and trilobites. I definitely agree with that, Julie. So horseshoe crabs evolved 445 million years ago during the Ordovician period. And there are four species that are actually still living today in shallow coastal water. So going back to your trivia question, when we asked about the uh, longest evolutionary history, is the horseshoe crab it's still living today? Um, and they actually have a hard time, like you mentioned, Julie, to flip over like Kabuto. Uh, but the real life animal can sometimes use its tail, so I think it has a little bit of an advantage there. And uh, trilobites uh, lived around 470 million years ago during the Middle Ordovician period. They are one of the most diverse groups of extinct animals to be preserved, with an impressive 20,000 known species. They primarily, primarily lived in shallow water, and they were closely related to horseshoe crabs. Uh, and they went extinct at the end of the Permian period, about 251 million years ago, during that Permian mass extinction. Okay, so moving on to our next set of Pokemon, we're jumping ahead a little bit in time to the Ordovician. So we're at about 485 million years ago now. And we have two Pokemon called Lilip and Cradley. And they are based on the real life animal called the crinoid. And if we read their Pokedex uh, entry for Lily, which is the smaller purple one, it says that this ancient Pokemon attaches itself to a rock on the seafloor and catches approaching prey using tentacles shaped like flower petals. So crinoids lived around 485 million years ago during the Ordovician period in saltwater habitats, such as the deep ocean and coral reefs. There are around 600 species of crinoids today, um, although they were much more diverse in the past. And so uh, crinoids, actually the ones with a stalk, are commonly known as sea lilies, and they do attach to the sea bottom, much like this Pokemon. Uh, however, not all crinoids have stalks. So there is also a group of unstocked crinoids that are free swimming, and they are called feather stars, which I think are really cool. And uh, their arms were actually used for feeding, uh, which is the same way that this Pokemon uses the tentacles to catch prey. OK, 
Okay, moving on to our next Pokemon. We're jumping ahead a little bit in time to the Devonian period, which is about 400 million years ago. And we have another two of the original Pokemon from my childhood. Um, and these two are Omanite and Omastar. Omastar is the larger evolved form with the spikes. Um, and so if we read the Pokedex entry for these two, they say for Omanite, which is the smaller one, it says that this Pokemon uses air stored in its shell to sink and rise in water, and that it swims in the sea by adeptly twisting its 10 tentacles. And then for the evolved form, Omastar, it says that its shell was too big for it to move freely, so it became extinct. So Ammonites evolved in the Devonian period, right? And so about 400 million years ago, uh, they are the extinct relatives of modern day cuttlefish, nautiloids, and squid. Um, they are also one of the most common fossils found around the world today. Um, they ranged in size from a few centimeters to like three feet in diameter. Um, and they primarily lived in the shallow waters. And they were also highly diverse with around 10,000 species. And some common predators included larger fish, other ammonites, and mosasaurs. And so in Pokemon, the turtle, the turtle Pokemon, actually Turtoga, preyed on Omanite and Omastar. And so uh, the Ammonites, actually, they went extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous period. Um, so it is believed, actually, that ocean acidification dissolved the shells of these young Ammonites, which were sea surface dwellers. So ocean acidification is caused by high levels of carbon dioxide in the water. And so, although it is still unclear exactly how they swam, uh, scientists do agree that they probably combined jet propulsion and the buoyancy of their shells, like in the Pokemon, to float around. All right, so now we are still in the Devonian period, 400 million years ago. And we have a really cool fish Pokemon named Relicanth that was based on the Coelacanth fish. And now if we read Relicanth's Pokedex entry, it says that this Pokemon was discovered during deep sea exploration. Its appearance hasn't changed in a hundred million years, so it's called a living fossil. So coming back to real life, coelacanths evolved approximately 400 million years ago, as Julie just mentioned, during the Devonian period. And they were actually thought to have gone extinct around the same time as the dinosaurs about 66 million years ago. However, something very interesting happened. In 1938, a museum curator, Marjorie Courtenay Latimer, uh, she discovered a coelacanth off the coast of South Africa. So, you know, it's not extinct. And so there used to be over 90 unique species of coelacanths, but only two remain today. Uh, they live in temperate waters uh, of the ocean's twilight zone, which is about 500 to 800 feet deep. And so in the case of the Pokemon Relicanth, uh, it, they say the appearance hasn't changed much in 100 million years. But for the coelacanth, it hasn't changed much in 400 million years. Okay, so now we are jumping into the late Triassic period. So now we're in the Mesozoic era, which is the age of the reptiles, like we learned from the trivia. And we're at about 225 million years ago. And we have a Pokemon named Aerodactyl, which is very closely based on pterodactyls or pterosaurs, which are extinct flying reptiles. And this is another one of the originals from my childhood. And in the uh, Game Boy Color game, you would find a piece of old amber and bring the amber to the scientist in the lab. And then the scientist would resurrect Aerodactyl for you. So that never quite made sense to me. But in any case, so if we read the Pokedex entry for Aerodactyl, it says that a Pokemon was resurrected from the genes of an ancient dinosaur. <laughs> Okay, so as uh, Julie mentioned, pterosaurs were flying reptiles uh, that lived from the Triassic 228 million years ago to the Cretaceous period uh, 66 million years ago. 
contrary to the popular belief, and as mentioned in the Pokédex, they were not dinosaurs. And I'm really sorry to break your hearts today if you thought that pterodactyls were dinosaurs. They're not. They lived during the same time as the dinosaurs. They were distant relatives, but they were not considered to be dinosaurs. They lived primarily near the seas, so close to their food. Um, they lived in trees and in caves. And there actually is a real group, as Julie was um, kind of alluding to, of pterosaurs named after this Pokemon called Aerodactylus. And these uh, here we have um, some of the images of the actual specimen on the screen here. But unlike the origins of this Pokemon, DNA actually cannot survive in amber for millions of years, even in the best conditions for fossilization. Um, though it's you know not useful for preserving DNA, amber is still important. It's an important preservation mechanism for smaller things like bugs, plant material, and feathers. But it's not likely to preserve parts of a pterosaur, even though that would be pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Moving right along. Now we're in the middle part of the Mesozoic era in the Jurassic period which is about 150 million years ago. And we have two Pokemon called Arken and the evolved form Archaeops. And they are based on the extinct bird-like creature called Archaeopteryx, which I'm sure many people have heard of. And so if we read the Pokedex for these two, it says that Arken is the ancestor of all bird Pokemon. Arken itself could not actually fly, but moved by hopping from treetop to treetop. And then for the evolved form, which is the larger one here, it says that from the ground, Archaeops uses a running start to take flight. So in real life, Archaeopteryx um, is believed to have been the first bird and is accepted as the last link between the dinosaurs and modern day birds. Um, so if you didn't know, birds today are descendants of dinosaurs. Um, so it lived during the Jurassic period about 150 million years ago in modern day southern Germany and Portugal. And so at that time, much of Europe was an archipelago of islands surrounded by a warm tropical sea, which sounds like a pretty good deal to me. I would totally love to live there. Um, but unlike the Pokemon, scientists believe that Archaeopteryx would actually fly in short bursts like a pheasant. Um, and there are also two competing view views for how flight actually began, uh, either top down or bottom up. So the top down theory says that they glided from rock cliffs or treetops and bottom up theory suggests that they flapped up into the trees from the ground while chasing prey like bugs. Now the anatomy of Archaeopteryx does have evidence for both of these theories. So this idea is still debated in the scientific community today. All right, so now we're on to everybody's favorite. We're in the Cretaceous period, which was between 145 and about 66 million years ago. And so now we have dinosaurs. So it actually surprisingly took the Pokemon company about 10 years to release their first Pokemon uh, dinosaur. So they started off with the bottom two, which were based loosely on uh, the Triceratops and also on the right, the um, Pachycephalosaurus. But the two that we're going to focus on today are at the top, um, the one based on the theropod dinosaurs like T-Rex, and then the other based on sauropods. So if we start in the early Cretaceous, we have two Pokemon based on sauropod dinosaurs. And their names are Amora and Aurorus is the evolved form. And so they lived about 120 million years ago. And if we read the Pokedex entry for Aurorus, which is the evolved one, it says, an Aurorus was found frozen solid within a glacier, just as it appeared long ago. So uh, going back to your point about Pokemon taking 10 years, that's interesting. I would have thought they would have done it sooner, right? But anyway, um, in real life, Amargosaurus was an herbivorous sauropod that lived during the early Cretaceous period around 132 million years ago. 
They are closely related to other species of long-necked dinosaurs like Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus. However, this dinosaur is different and unique uh, because it actually had a shorter neck. And it, you can also see it has very prominent spines um, going from you know, the neck down to the tail. So contrary to the Pokédex, though, Amargosaurus lived, um, like I said, during the Cretaceous period, which was one of the warmest periods in Earth's history. And it was so warm that even Antarctica had forests instead of glaciers, and there were dinosaurs roaming around there. So in real life, we would not be able to find a frozen sauropod dinosaur. But scientists have found other cool prehistoric creatures preserved in ice, such as the woolly mammoth. I don't know if you guys have heard about this in, um, in Siberia in 2012. And scientists have also found other creatures like bison and woolly rhinoceros. But these frozen fossils do not date to be older than the last ice age which we learned in trivia when that was 20,000 years ago. Okay, let's see. All right, so now we're jumping to the end of the Cretaceous period, so around 80 million years ago. And we have two Pokemon based on the T-Rex, or the theropod dinosaurs. So they are Tyrant and Tyrantrum. And if we look at the Pokedex entry for the larger evolved form, Tyrantrum, it has two cool facts. So the first is that it says complete restoration is impossible, allowing room for theories that its entire body was once covered in a feather-like coat. And then it also says that thanks to its gargantuan jaws, which could shred thick metal plates as if they were paper, it was invincible in the ancient world it once inhabited. So in real life, Tyrannosaurus, or as we all know it to be T-Rex, was a carnivorous theropod dinosaur that lived at the end of the Cretaceous period, around 90 to 66 million years ago. Dinosaurs are commonly portrayed as having scales, like other reptiles, but now scientists actually believe that some dinosaurs had feathers. Can you imagine a fuzzy T-Rex? Maybe not so scary, but still has razor sharp teeth, so probably still scary. Um, <laughs> but anyway, T-Rex is known to have comically small arms compared to the rest of its body. Um, and so as a juvenile, T-Rex's arms were actually more proportional to its size. But as it grew bigger, its arms remained the same size. Um, so scientists still don't really know the reason for this. Um, but in contrast to the tiny arms, the T-Rex did have huge jaws with the bite force of 8,000 pounds. And because its jaws were so powerful, it is possible that maybe T-Rex, he didn't really need to use its arms. I mean, if I had a bite force of 8,000 pounds, who cares about using arms to eat, right? Your jaws are so strong. Um, so while it's pretty high up in the food chain, the natural predators of T-Rex included other T-Rex and a species of Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is always my favorite. Anyway, moving on. So now we have two sets of Pokemon left. Um, so we're still in the end of the Cretaceous period, about 80 million years ago. So just a little bit before the mass extinction event. And we have two turtle Pokemon. Um, named Tertuoga and Caracosta, and they're based on the fossil turtle called the Archelon. And so if we read their Pokedex entries, it says that Tertuoga lived in the sea, but came up onto land to search for prey. And then for the evolved form, Caracosta, which is the bigger one here, it says that its jaws are terrifyingly powerful. It could eat Omastar and Omanite whole and not be bothered in the slightest by their shells. So if you remember from the beginning of the presentation, Omanite and Omastar are the Ammonite Pokemon. So apparently the turtle Pokemon eats the Ammonite Pokemon. That is slightly terrifying, but super cool. <laughs> and so in real life, Archelon was an extinct turtle that lived during the late Cretaceous around 75 to 66 million years ago. It is the largest turtle to ever be documented with a staggering length from the head to the tail of 15 feet and a width from flip, one flipper to the other flipper of 13 feet. Um, it could live up to 100 years old 
and it lived near the surface of the ocean. They were omnivores and mostly probably ate soft-bodied organisms like jellyfish and other cephalopods. However, they did have powerful beaks which could break open hard ammonite shells like the Pokemon Omanite. And unlike the Pokemon, Archelon only came onto land to lay their eggs. And once those eggs were hatched, newborn turtles would venture out into the ocean. Okay, so now we're going to our last Pokemon for the night. And we've jumped all the way in time to the Cenozoic era, which is the age of the mammals. And we are somewhere between the Pliocene and the Pleistocene epochs, which was somewhere around 5 million years ago. And we have a Pokemon named Mamoswine, who is pretty closely uh, modeled after woolly mammoths. And so if we read his Pokedex entry, it says that Mamoswine flourished worldwide during the Ice Age, but its population declined when the masses of ice began to dwindle. And then there was another really cool fact in the Pokedex that I found that says that this Pokemon can be spotted in wall paintings from as far back as 10,000 years ago. So presumably ancient Poke people were drawing ancient Pokemon in their caves. That is really cool. And I do have a comment about that after I tell you about mammoths in real life. So mammoths are an extinct group of elephants that lived during the Pliocene epoch about 5 million years ago to 4,000 years ago through the last ice age. They appeared um, millions of years after the mass extinction of dinosaurs. So no, dinosaurs and mammoths did not live together during the same time. I know if you've seen the ice age movies, which I really love to, um, they show that and it's not true. Um, but their distribution was widespread throughout the continents, and the environment at that time was like a tundra. Um, and so global sea levels were actually 400 feet lower than they are today, and about 25% of the Earth's land masses were covered in ice. So the Pokedex um, mentions that mammoth swine was seen in cave paintings, right? And so that was dating back 10,000 years. Uh, and so, like I said, this is really interesting because cave paintings in real life drawn by real humans living during the Ice Age were discovered, and I hope I say this right, in the Rufignac Cave in France. Um, and so the exact cause of the extinctions, extinction of mammoths is still debated, but it could have been due to melting glaciers, which is seems like similar to mammoth swine, and because of rising sea levels. Or it could have been um, by overhunting of humans about 3,700 years ago. Okay, so that was our last Pokemon of the night. So we can take any questions that you guys have about either the real Pokemon, I mean the fake Pokemon, <laughs> or the real life animals. Um, so if you're watching from WebEx, you can put those questions in the chat. Um, and if you're watching from Facebook, you can comment on the live stream and we'll try to answer some of them now. So, I grew up watching Pokemon too, so I, I wouldn't blame you for calling them real. <laughs> it felt like it was real, right? Like you grew up with them, so. <laughs> I just, um, so let's see what's going on here. Okay. So I have one question here from Philip who wants to know would a horseshoe crab starve to death if flipped over or just wait to be eaten by a predator? Probably both, I would think. What do you think, Rhea? <laughs> I, th I think... I think you know more about paleontology than I do, so I yeah, would so agree. From my experience at the beach, um, if it's not going to get flipped over by a wave, it probably would just eventually die. Or if... It, if it would either just die or would be eaten first. Whichever happens first is not good for it. So they try to use their tails to flip over, but it doesn't often work that well from what I have seen. <laughs> um, Sorry, horse you crab. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see. Another question is, were Amargosaurus's neck spines there to deter predators from biting into it? Rhea, do you remember what you read about Amargosaurus? 
I mean, it probably was a defense mechanism, right? So yeah. dinosaurs, like, they, you know, evolved to have, like, you know, like ankylosaurs, like the armored dinosaurs, right? They use their spikes to fight off predators. So um, I would um, I would say probably yes, that our margosaurs, you know, had those spikes on the necks. Um, and I feel like I've also seen in like pictures that T-Rex is biting the neck of a brachiosaurus or something. Looks awfully painful. So it would not be a bad idea to have spikes on the neck. Yeah, I think that I think we're not also exactly sure what they were used for. So some people have thought that there was like a can't think of the word like um like skin in between the spines to make it kind of cell like, but I don't know how widely um, accepted that is now. We have another bite force of the Arpalon, which I am trying to find now because I have absolutely no idea. Um, I imagine it was pretty strong because, Maria, do you remember they could eat ammonites, right? Yes, their jaws were strong enough to actually break open the shells of ammonites. So I don't see a number, but it sounds like they were pretty strong. Not going to be as strong as a T-Rex at 8,000 pounds, but they're probably pretty strong. Let's see, another one's coming in now. They did. Question from Micah. Did the Megalodon live at the same time as as dinosaurs 2.6 million years ago and the bite and the bite force of it is 2000 to 4000 pounds 60 feet long so megalodons lived more recently than dinosaurs as far as i know let me just check this ria do you remember exactly when so this is 23 million years ago. So they definitely lived way after the dinosaurs. So they did not overlap at all in time. But yes, they did have a very strong bite force. I think this is probably right, 2,000 to 4,000 pounds. Um, yeah, so he's one of my favorites. They should make a, they have a shark Pokemon, but it's not a Megalodon, so they should make they should make one of those next. They uh, really should. They should. And no, I always no. think, yeah, I always think about how like coelacanths were, they thought were extinct. They thought giant squid were extinct for a really long time, but they found. So I wonder about Megalodon. I don't know if people would be thrilled about a giant, you know, Megalodon. But yeah, so I'm, torn. I'm torn. I kind of want them to still be alive, but I'm also kind of terrified. So, so yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Oh boy, my mom is watching. <laughs> How old is Amora? So Amora was the sauropod dinosaur. So that was, um, was that 125 million years ago? So that one was pretty old. Let's see. Did mammoths have any predators? Um, I think people, right, would have been predators. Um, and maybe if one was old and or sick, um, another carnivorous animal, may, I don't know exactly, maybe saber-toothed cats. Um, yeah, so that's my guess. Uh, uh, so Philip wants to know about the reason for feathers on a dinosaur. Hmm, do we know much about why? I mean, that's all like, that's all sort of guesswork because we can never really know. But I think at least they think like young dinosaurs, young theropods would have had it, had feathers, and that would have helped them stay warm. Um, but I don't think scientists really know for sure yet. Here's Anthony asking a question. Which, which would have evolved as <laughs> Pikachu, Squirtle, or Charmander? I, well, Pikachu evolves with the Thunderstone, so it can evolve kind of whenever. <laughs> um, I think Charmander might evolve at like level 14, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's a silly question. Um, 
Azzy wants to know, what does the word dinosaur originate from? Rhea, you know this one, right? Oh, yeah, uh, I believe it was, um, coined the term dinosaur. Richard Owen, I think. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was, it meant terrible. I think Ty tyrant, it was tyrant blizzard. Yeah. Um, hmm, this is a hard one. What was the last dinosaur to be on Earth before the mass extinction? So I don't think we'll ever know exactly the last one, but T-Rex was kind of up there at the end. Um, what other ones were at the very end? Uh, I think, I think Triceratops might have been near the end. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked at dinosaur dinosaurs. This is definitely that is correct. That is correct. Yes, thank you. All right, let me see. Oh, and um, adding to the and a thing about feathers, um, they were also used for thermal insulation. So for rather than like flight, right? Because dinosaurs they did not fly. Um, fly and they did not live in the water. Yes, but when birds evolved from dinosaurs, then they eventually could fly. But we think that took a little while. Um, I have a question here from, let's see, from Wyatt, who wants to know how many spikes does the Pokemon that looks like Brachiosaurus have? So the real one, it looks like, it has a lot. I'm trying to count, but there's, Probably like 50, let me see if it says here. Um, these are hard questions. Let's see. It doesn't give an exact number, but I would definitely say it's over 50 spines and they go all the way from like the back of the neck all the way down to the end of the tail. So. That's a really strange dinosaur. He was always one of my favorites, too. Um, let me see. What else do we have? We have a question about how much does the T-Rex eat? And I don't know if we'll ever really know the answer to that because, you know, they're not around anymore. But I would imagine it's quite a bit. They could probably polish off a decent sized dinosaur <laughs> if they're hungry. Um, I imagine like other predators, they may not get, uh, they may not catch prey like every day. So they might, you know, gorge themselves when they do catch something. So they probably could eat like a pretty big dinosaur. Maria, do you know any more about this? The best, the best guess is about 40,000 calories per day. That's all. That is all. <laughs> Here's the question about megalodons again. How did they go extinct? That's a good question. I don't know that. Um, probably, I would guess it's something with changing climate. Um, let's see. Extinction, okay, so it says climate change. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. so the, the, it got colder and the poles got, uh, the North and South Pole froze over um, and affected the coastal habitats where they came. That's why we think they went extinct. Um, so as usual, it's changing climate that kills off our species. Let's see, are there any homes? Starvation. Hmm, is there a consensus among paleontologists as to whether T Rex was a predator or a scavenger? There's probably not a consensus because everyone has different ideas. Um, I haven't heard recently. Um, but yeah, that's a great question. I am not sure about that one. 
Yeah, so they're they're not exactly sure, but there's like you know evidence that they were scavengers as well as predators. So yeah, they don't really have the exact answer. So something people are still researching today. My guess would be that it could have been a combination. So it was probably opportunistic. I don't think it would like it might not have been dead available prey. But probably also on, but I guess we'll have to wait for the scientists to really figure it out. Um, okay, so here's a question about, I, I don't know how to say this, but the Gaspar fossil Pokemon. So these are the newer ones that I'm not too familiar with. And from my experience, all I know is that you get different parts of the fossil and then you can combine them how you want and make different animals so i didn't know too much about them so i didn't put them in the presentation but yes i have heard of them and they are pretty cool i think there's one that looks kind of like a prehistoric fish which i thought was cool um yeah so next time we'll have to include those guys uh let's see all right and maybe one more question uh yes uh deanna there will be a recording of this and we'll post it somewhere on our website soon um but that wasn't the question we're gonna end on let's see i do have a question for you julie God, okay <laughs> what is your favorite pokemon okay this is a good question i've been trying to think of an answer for this one I would say probably Pikachu because I'm stereotypical. My phone is a Pikachu. <laughs> um, but I also really like Bulbasaur. And for fossil Pokemon, Kabutops was always my favorite. Um, does Rhea have a favorite Pokemon? I'm, I'm also stereotypical and I really like Pikachu. Um, I also like Bulbasaur because it always reminded me of garlic. <laughs> And then I also do, did always like uh, Charizard. Yes, Charizard is also his favorite. He was cool. He's kind of like a dinosaur, but you know, dragon. Okay, so we are at 7.30 now. So we're going to cut it off here. Thank you everyone who participated tonight and listened to us talk about Pokemon and geologic time. Um, our next late night will be, what is it, November? So December, the first Wednesday in December. I think it's the second. And we'll be having a guest speaker talk about Bizarre Beasts. Um, if you liked tonight or didn't like tonight, please fill out the survey. We just put a link to it in the chat box. Um, let us know what you thought, how we can make it better, or what you liked. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in. Does Rhea have something to say? <laughs> You actually also if you want to or are interested in hearing about the geology of Iceland, we do have our Ask a Geologist. Um, our series is this Friday at 1 p.m. So tune in. Um, the information should be on our social media as well as our website. Um, so again, if you want to know about the geology of Iceland, you can hear um, a talk um, by uh, Dr. Tini Giovanelli. And that's again on Friday at 1 p.m. until 2. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.